My name is Mara Cunningham. I'm a PhD candidate in modern Chinese history at University of California, Irvine, where I study the social and cultural history of child welfare issues in 20th century Shanghai. This year, on December 26th, uh, Mao Zedong celebrated his 120th birthday, which was a very fraught issue in the Chinese media and in Chinese politics. There were a lot of questions before the celebrations or before the anniversary about what the celebrations would look like if there would be a big public revival of Maoism or if the leaders leadership would take a more restrained approach toward Mao's birthday. And they wound up doing the latter. Uh, celebrations of his birth were fairly muted. She, uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping and the other members of the Politburo Standing Committee did go to Mao's tomb in Beijing's Tiananmen Square where they bowed three times and acknowledged his importance to the Chinese Communist Party. But other than that, there were very few public commemorations of his birth, aside from in his hometown of Shaoshan in Hunan province. There were very large celebrations, but that was really the only place that had a big acknowledgement of the days of importance. Well, 120 years celebrates two completions of the 60-year life cycle. So when a man lives 60 years, he's considered to have lived a full life. So Mao has now gone through two full life cycles, even though he died in 1976. In a larger sense, the 120th anniversary of his birth was important because it comes only a year after Xi Jinping took control of the country and of the Chinese Communist Party. And so this has been a year in which a lot of people have been watching Xi Jinping to figure out what his political stance is, what his approach toward reform is. Is he interested in economic reform, social reform, political reform? Is he going to go back to a more hardline Maoist uh, approach? And so this was considered one more occasion in which people could take the temperature of Xi Jinping and figure out what his attitude for the past and for the future will be. When the PRC began, there were large numbers of indigent and homeless children in large cities like Shanghai. China had just been through 12 years of warfare, first with the Japanese and then a civil war between the communists and the nationalists. And so there were large numbers of children who had no families who needed to be taken care of. And for the most part, the state stepped in to provide that care. And over the course of the early Mao years, questions about child welfare, about child poverty, largely disappeared. But in the past few years, we've started to see increasing public concern over the state of uh, Chinese childhood and the welfare of Chinese children. There's been a lot of talk in the, in the media about the left behind children whose parents go from inner provinces down to the coast to find jobs. And these children are left in small villages and towns with only their grandparents to look after them. And there's a big public concern that left behind children grow up without knowing a parent's love, that they are isolated, that they don't have the family ties that a child who grew up during the Mao era would have had. There's a big concern about how air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution affects children. And air pollution is the type of pollution that we most often hear about in the American media because it's so visible. It's very easy to take photographs of a city skyline being obscured by smog. And there have also been a few high profile cases in the past several months of young children being diagnosed with diseases like lung cancer, which seems fairly clearly linked to the air pollution. But there are also uh, increasing numbers of children in China who suffer from asthma and other respiratory diseases. There's a lot of concern about how what's in the food is affecting Chinese children. And one of the biggest changes in the past year or so is that now when you're traveling from Hong Kong into mainland China, you're only allowed to take two tins of powdered baby formula with you. On mainland China, there's a reluctance to purchase domestic brands of baby formula because there have been some high-profile food safety scandals connected with them. So people like to buy foreign brands, but now that uh, trade from Hong Kong into mainland China is being limited. I think there are going to be increasing numbers of activists in China who fight environmental pollution, who are going to work hard to get clean air, clean water, clean soil. 
and there have already been several very well-known environmental activists. I think this is an issue that's not going away. It affects virtually everyone in the country across socioeconomic lines, and I think in the coming years we're going to see more and more people concerned about environmentalism and taking a public stand on these issues.